Hello there. Um, I'm going to execute a very simple experiment uh, using uh, a, a very simple um, RF power detector circuit, which is quite popular. If you Google it on uh, the internet, you're going to see uh, this particular schematic coming out RF uh, power detector or RF power meter. This is how uh, you can construct such a simple circuit. It consists uh, of um, a wire which plays the role of a um, small antenna. Then we have uh, two diodes. These are actually SCOTI diodes. And the reason I picked up SCOTI instead of standard uh, diodes is because they have a very low uh, turn on forward voltage, are approximately 0 0.45 volts instead of the classic uh, 0 0.65 or 0 0.7 volts. Um, we have an LED here uh, to provide uh, some optical emission of the output. Uh, 100 nanofarad. This is a capacitor to block any high frequency components coming out of here. And this is actually my addition a very small uh, 1 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, which is going to be used actually to monitor the output at this point uh, using a, a, um, a node amplifier. We're going to see how the output sounds. Um, ideally, I would love to have BAT41 SCOTI diodes instead of 42 because they have an even lower uh, forward voltage, approximately 0 0.25 volts instead of 0 0.45 volts for BAT42. Uh, the lower the forward voltage, the less um, uh, actually uh, potential is established across the diode which means that more voltage is provided for the LED so this one can turn on easier. Um, okay, um, let's uh, let's use a mobile phone uh, and put it next to the wire and see how and if anything is going to appear at the output. Then we're going to see uh, using a, an oscilloscope uh, the, the signal, the shape of the signal at the output across the capacitor and then uh, we're going at the end to see how the output um, uh, listens uh, using a node amplifier. Okay, I have I have my circuit over here. Uh, sorry for the position of the camera, but I try to keep it away from the mobile phone because I get uh, some uh, some noise coming out from the mobile phone. Okay, this is the wide actually the antenna, we have the two, the two diodes here, LED, the 100 nanofarad capacitor, and this is the electrolytic capacitor which will be used to provide AC coupling. Okay, let's place it next to the mobile phone and make a call Let's see what happens. I'm going to keep the LED there. Okay, I'm going to switch off the light so it's more visible. Yeah, so you can see that LED is turning on. Uh, what actually happens is that the, radi the electromagnetic radiation from the mobile phone is coupled uh, through the wire into the circuit, and uh, which provides a kind of rectification. And this rectification actually outputs a DC voltage. Uh, okay, it's not constant, but it's DC, which actually turns on the LED, as you can see here. Actually, depending on where I put also the, my detector, I get different signal strength. In this case, I notice that my mobile phone has stronger radiation at the top, at the bottom, because I have a feeling that the antenna is located at this point here, just down here. It's stronger there. And also, if I turn this vertically. The LED does not turn on despite being very close to the mobile phone. This has to do with the polarization between uh, the transmitter, which is the mobile phone, and the receiver, which is actually our detector. We have linear polarization maybe along this way, and linear polarization across this wire, which fit. And we have maximum power transfer. When you train actually vertically, significant and nuisance takes place. Okay, this is something extra which doesn't have to do with RF detector, but just mention it in case you're wondering what's happening here. So, we have the LED turning on. Um, 
Okay, now let's see. Let's see now how. Okay, it's, this one has been turned off now. Let's try to connect. <coughs> I'm going to connect uh, my oscilloscope probe uh, to the output of the RF detector and just investigate the signal. So we have, uh, we have okay, let's put it this way. I need to connect probe here on the ground. Remaining balance as usual. Okay, let's go. Okay. What do we have there is actually okay. My oscilloscope cannot lock the signal because it's not exactly periodic, although it's pretty periodic. you that the distance between okay the two peaks here yes the distance between the two peaks is approximately 4.6 so about 4.6 milliseconds or so I have printed here the the standards of the GSM signals so what we're going to see here is that we have we have okay we have time slot of we have eight time slots uh, during a 4.6 milliseconds period. Our mobile phone is using one out of eight of those time slots. So effectively we have the signal that repeats every 4.615 milliseconds. So it's not visible it's four four point six one five etc. Eight slots here. And our mobile phone is using one slot every uh, every 4.6 milliseconds. So ideally, what we're going to see on what we want to see on, on, on our oscilloscope is one um, a kind of square wave repeating every such uh, period of time. So this one has turned off. Let's turn it on again by making another call. Okay. How many times we have to listen our remaining balance? Okay, I'm changing the position of this thing because I want to make uh, our oscilloscope to remain constant, if possible, into a specific uh, period. Okay, we have. It's not very easy to get there. Sorry about that. Yeah, let me admit that. Okay, it's nearly there. Oh, sometimes I can see it, but not. Okay, it's just that we have a small chaos here, but I'm trying to fix it. Okay, it's nearly there. It's nearly there. Okay, so we're good. can you see the fix over there? Okay, this we have a two milliseconds. We have a two milliseconds uh, per division spacing, so that's approximately two. Four. We have four milliseconds difference between the two peaks, which look like square waves. It's not square wave, but we we'll simplify things to make our life easier. So this is one time slot. Our mobile phone is using at this instant this particular time slot and repeats every four point approximately four point six milliseconds according to the GSM standard. Okay, perfect. So we have locked it. And this is actually what I want to show you. Um, the vertical division is about 500 milliseconds per division. So we have one. Oh, the mobile phone switched on. Switched off again. Oh, let's try to make it. I'm going to catch you eventually. Okay, perfect. We have 500 milli 500 millivolts vertical uh, division. Let me check this. Okay, one, two, three, four. So we have maybe something like two volts peak. Uh, two volts, this is a uh, peak uh, signal. 
compared to zero volts. Yeah, I mean, the peak to peak here is approximately 500 milli, milli volts, but if we take it in respect to the ground, the top one reaches 2 volts. So perfect. What we see here is yeah, exactly what I told you about the GSM time slots. Every 4.6 milliseconds approximately. This is the, the slot that uh, your handset is using to transmit and receive signals from uh, uh, the base station. Okay, now let's uh, let's see uh, how the output uh, the output signal here to uh, an audio speaker. I'm going to disconnect our uh, oscilloscope. Sorry for the mess, guys. I have so many cables over here. This is my smaller the amplifier speaker here. The circuit of the on the amplifier. I have the input here. Let me just connect it. Okay, so that's okay. That's the positive goes there. Ground goes here. You are, I'm, I'm sure you are you are all very familiar with this particular sound that will actually happen in a while. Let me actually put a supply to a circuit. Um, actually, I have my ca the camera in front of me, so I'm trying to make uh, our, our presentation as best as possible. Okay, I'm going to switch on. I'm going to switch on the audio speaker. Okay, we have DC coming in. Let's try, let's make a phone call. Okay. Okay, the, the sound, the sound that you just heard is supposed to have a frequency of 1 over 4.61 milliseconds and this okay let's make it okay I just made the division for you if you take 1 over 4.651 that's seconds this makes 260 this is actually the frequency that we hear when we listen the signal to the output of the speaker. Yes, I'm going to measure it using my multimeter, which has frequency uh, uh, meter as well. Let's try to see if it's possible to make this happen. Okay, I'm going to zoom in there. We are going to see, hopefully, a number coming very close to 200 uh, hertz. Okay, let me switch off the call, make it switch on again. And it's going to be really noisy, guys, so I'm not going to speak now. Okay. I have I have just locked uh, my multimeter. I put it on hold, so you can see that 0.2 kilohertz uh, measuring measuring frequency, which is like 200 208 hertz at the moment, and this one comes very close to the to the uh, 216 that we just uh, found uh, theoretically. So we see that the measurement and the and our theory matches pretty well. Okay, so that's the end of our experiment. Hope you enjoyed it, guys, and y you just understood how an RF power meter works and how it behaves and what it's doing and all these things related with the uh, emission of electromagnetic uh, energy from a mobile phone. Okay, bye-bye.